So now that we can make decisions happen in our code, we run into a bit of an issue of what happens if I've got a lot of uh, conditions I want to work from. This is where we introduce something known as compound conditional statements. And we've got, uh, as you can see, three different kinds we can work from. The AND condition, the OR condition, and the NOT condition. They're pretty simple if you think about it. They're all, they all work off the same kind of concept. They work from basically if I say my AND. My AND says that something on this side of my equation and this side of my equation, they both have to be true. This has to be evaluated as a true statement and this has to be evaluated as a true statement. If at any point in time one of those is, say, a false, a false statement, then what happens is this all as a whole becomes false. So let's say, for example, uh, you know, I'm, I'm making uh, a little bit of a conditional statement here. Uh, to get my daily serving of fruit, I have to have an apple and an orange. So I have to have these. If I say I had an apple and an orange today, I got my uh, daily uh, intake of fruit. But if I said I had an apple and a banana, I did not because even though I got the apple, which makes that true, this was a banana, not an orange. So I did not get my uh, daily intake. That's actually where we can get into the OR statement. The OR statement is now uh, set up so that as long as one of these conditions is true, as long as this one OR this one is true, then the entire thing gets out, equated out as true. We can think of this as the same thing. Now we're going uh, to get my, since I already used fruit, I'm going to say uh, vegetables. To get my daily serving of vegetables, I have to have a carrot or I have to have a uh, cucumber. Carrot or cucumber. Well, I go in and I said I had a cucumber today. Oh, well, good. You did not have a carrot, so that is false. But you did have a cucumber, so that's true. You had your serving of vegetables today. If I said I had a rutabaga, uh, well, that's not a carrot, and that's not a cucumber, so guess what? You need to eat more vegetables. And then we get the last one, our not statement. So not. Not actually is going to flip uh, whatever is uh, whatever decision we have currently uh, and make it the exact opposite so I can't really figure out a let's see uh, I'll use a not food an analogy for this one uh, and the way we can think of this is uh, think about it as user logged in so if we look at it we've got user logged in. Well, if they are logged in, this may be true or false. And so, depending on what happens, let's say, for example, uh, the user is not logged in. So, this is going to equate out to false. Well, what happens if I want to do something if they're not logged in? One way I can do this is I can go about it and I can say equal, equal, false. But since it's a, already a boolean, I don't I don't necessarily want to uh, worry about that. Uh, so what I can do instead is I can write it out as this. I can say not user logged in. So what happens here? Well, what's happening is user logged in. Again, the user is not logged in, so this equates out to false. The exclamation point, the not decision, is going to take this idea and it's going to flip it. So it suddenly, because the user is not logged in, you know, I want to 
prompt them with the login screen or the do you want to join screen because they're not uh, you know a member of the site just yet so we suddenly have uh, a little bit more justification we can do this this way uh, instead of the equal equal side again because this is a boolean already